The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio Welcome to the X-Zone A place where fact is fiction And fiction is reality Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell And welcome back, Exxon Nation. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and iHeartRadio. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you 24-7, 365, just visit www, www, yeah, only three Ws, dot xo uh, xzbn dot net that's www dot xzbn dot net my guest this hour exo nation is robert davis and um you know he is an internationally recognized scientist in his field and served as a professor at the state of new york the state university of new york for over 30 years he graduated with a phd in sensory neuroscience from the ohio state university published over 60 articles in scholarly journals lectured at a national and international scientific conference has been awarded several major research grants and Dr. Davis serves as a member of the, on the board of directors and research team of Edgar Mitchell's Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences, which was established to provide scientific exploration of the relationship among science consciousness and extraordinary experiences, such as near-death and out-of-body experience, unidentified aerial phenomenon, and extrasensory perception, among others. He has co-authored articles based on this research, which has been published in the Journal of Consciousness Studies and the Journal of Scientific Exploration. Dr. Davis has written two books entitled The UFO Phenomenon, Should I Believe?, and Life After Death, an Analysis of the Evidence, and has lectured on these topics at both national and international conferences. His website, www the UFO phenomenon.com and Dr. Davis, welcome to the Exxon, sir. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Where did your interest in uh, life after death come from, uh, Dr. Davis? Well, it's a good question, but throughout the years I've been studying the brain, the sensory systems, mm-hmm. and obviously consciousness is a key aspect of that arena, so to speak. And, and I can't, couldn't help but have read numerous papers about consciousness which, if persists after bodily death, you would think that we would be able to somehow quantify or qualify it, Mm -hmm. at least at the neurological level, yet we do not know where consciousness resides within the model we call the brain. We don't know if it does indeed not only provide us with a sense of self or the I, and let's use consciousness to, to imply the soul or spirit, whatever, that may mean for that given individual. But we don't know where it's regulated in the brain, but if there is a continuity of consciousness, or in other words, some aspect of life after death, and we don't have the answer, nor do I, uh, despite my book on the topic, um, we would tend to think that there should be some subtle type of energy that's generated from within the brain that we have not yet detected Mm. that may very well persist. Why do you think so many people in today's society are seeking answers to the question of, is there life after death? Well, all I can say with absolute certainty is that for the 150,000 individuals that are going to die each day, that their body will be in the ground or cremated and obviously be no longer functional. Mm -hmm. Uh, Beyond that, 
we're only speculating. But now people who know they're not going to live, at least in this body, for infinity, of course, they, they are obviously asking questions, not only about whether or not I'm going to live after my body is gone, but uh, also more broad-based questions, like what is the meaning of life? Why am I conscious? Why did life evolve? I think we've all asked that at one time or another, let alone whether or not there is an, an existence beyond our uh, body's limitations uh, and lifespan. So we have to we have to try to figure out whether or not uh, the many questions that people all over the world throughout time have asked, uh, what is beyond death? Uh, and many religions certainly believe that there is life after death, but it's faith based. That's and, that's right. Materialism it. scientists don't want mm -hmm. uh, they, faith to to prove a, or refute a hypothesis. Yeah, it's, it seems that, you know, people way back when did not have the the knowledge of science that we have today when these religious philosophies were actually started. So their limits to their surroundings were very limited, and I guess they wanted to find out the answers, answers to so many questions. But is it possible that the search for the answer to life after death is a so sociological last grab at life? Uh, it's a broad question, uh, and it and it gets into physical, uh, philosophical uh, areas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how, how do we experience anything at all? What leads to a conscious experience? So what is the function yeah. of a conscious experience? It, much of this is defined at at the societal level, and as an individual, we obviously utilize that information to formulate an opinion. But society certainly, religion certainly, our parents certainly uh, drive our final conclusions uh, based on years of, of interpretation, listening to uh, what we hear about yeah. this. And we try to make some final conclusion that we can be content with. Um, but still, there's some degree of anxiety in all who fear death. But people who do report that, knock on the door, and have a near-death experience or an out-of-body experience or among other types of extraordinary spiritual mystical experiences, contend, contend that life is not the end. And to them, that is real. They firmly conclude that. Uh, and they believe it to be as real as speaking to a family member. Uh, so the question is, is there some spiritual neuron in the brain that's giving rise to these considerations? Or it, in fact, are people seeing a different world? Or, the, or are they seeing the world differently? Or are they just having the experience that comes along with the process of death. It remains to be seen. And how do you prove it? Uh, you, you obviously can't, although mm -hmm. there are s several physicians, and among other scientists and non-scientists, who contend that in their experiments that they have indeed proven that there is a, a continuity of consciousness after death. And that's largely from experiments with individuals who have a near-death experience. Uh, just in the United States alone, 200,000 individuals have an NDE. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are many criteria that define that, but those that have that type of experience, where they're resuscitated, brought back to life after they flatten line for about 20 seconds or, or longer, up to several minutes, uh, they report very similar outcomes not only not only all those that we have become very well familiar with like the bright light mm -hmm. uh, that meeting deceased relatives religious figures of uh, feeling profound love and joy beyond description uh, a woman once said that uh, the, the, the type of love the magnitude of love that she experienced during her NDE was like looking at her newborn baby's eyes for the first time magnified 10 million times now she's getting at it but it still doesn't capture the essence of that experience. So, it, nevertheless, they no longer fear death. Yeah. Among many other positive psycho-spiritual types of outcomes mm -hmm. that are manifested as a result of this extraordinary experience. But what is uniquely interesting is that not only individuals who have NDEs or out-of-body experiences report this, but people who have other types of extraordinary experiences facilitated in different ways. 
uh, also tend to have the same general experiences and outcomes. Not always. Everybody's different individually, personality-wise. That gives rise that faith that gives rise to some differences. But question is, since we all have a brain, of course, is it a brain-based event? Right. Uh, an illusion, an hallucination of some type, as a result of a dying, chaotic brain gone haywire, or in fact, are people actually indeed crossing over, experiencing another dimension, reality, whatever you may want to call it, something that, that may coexist in our space and time, but at a different frequency. In other words, we may not be aware of this coexisting reality uh, with non-human intelligences where they reside. And, and it sounds woo-woo indeed, but there are many leading physicists, um, neuroscientists, etc., that believe in these theories, and, and nothing is conclusive, of course. But they contend that, that, that maybe some of the phenomena we are observing, both in the skies in the form of unidentified early phenomena, uh, or ghostly apparitions, or other types of unexplainable experiences, may, may be related. Uh, to to this, and we're talking essentially about subtle energy. Um, uh, doctor, we've got to take our first break. Please stand by. Exonation. Dr. Sure. Robert Davis is our special guest. www.theufophenomenon.com. We're talking to Dr. Davis this hour about his book, Life After Death, an analysis of the evidence. And we'll both be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Gwilda Wiaka's latest book, The Science of Magic, Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is the first book in a series based on her writings that open every episode of the Science of Magic radio show. Drawing on the subject matter of each guest, and armed with over 40 years' experience in shamanism, 35 years in alternative health, and degrees in psychology and religious studies, Wilda introduces relevant and leading-edge information that supports spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Rich with wisdom and inspirational quotes packaged in digestible segments, this is a book that will pull you from cover to cover. It will also serve as a daily inspirational reading for years to come. The Science of Magic Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is available at our website, tsompublications.com, amazon.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Back in Victorian England, a famous theologian posed a perplexing riddle. Why are the two top personalities in the Bible tagged with the numbers 7 and 11? Academics agree the answer is found in the stunning discovery of a hitherto secret Bible structure explained in a new book called The Genesis Grid. The discovery is so simple that preschool children could illustrate it. Certain claims are hugely controversial and may offend some, but at the X-Zone, we've studied this awesome new book and agree with one expert, and I quote, These discoveries appear to be beyond coincidence. So who or what hid this wonderful pattern in the Bible, and what might they do next? Find out more, X-Zone Nation, and read reviews on www.genesisgrid.co.uk. That's www.genesisgrid.co.uk.
Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Robert Davis is our special guest of this hour. We're talking about uh, Dr. Davis's new book entitled Life After Death, The Analysis of the Evidence. His website is www.theufophenomenon.com. There are there are, there is something called, I believe, a living cadaver in which the body of a deceased person who has been pronounced brain dead and legally and clinically dead is kept alive for the purpose of cropping organs uh, or for other aspects of research. Now, what does this do to the life after death aspect if the person is being kept alive on life support, but the brain function is no longer there? Well, that's a, that's a reasonable question, uh, and I, I hate to um, use an alibi, but uh, I, I wish I had a, a definitive answer for you. Uh, of course, the brain, uh, the brain is not functioning, and mm-hmm. thus uh, the person is not conscious. Uh, however, some would contend that if the brain is not operating, then it may not be able to uh, generate a type of energy known as torsion energy, mm-hmm. uh, facilitated by... Uh, biophotons or, or quantum processes, in other words, that do arise within the brain. And if this energy uh, is dependent on brain function, uh, it may not be able to escape the body. That's one theory. Right. Uh, and thus, there's a non existence, no reality, unconscious forever, as scary as that might sound. But. What if, however, uh, an aspect of consciousness is not dependent on the brain? Uh, we're talking about the old dualist contention, the mind-brain separation. Mm-hmm. And if it indeed is independent of the brain, not contingent on its functioning level, then yeah, it, it certainly can escape, roam free wherever it may in a different space time. Who knows? Uh, again, we're looking into maybe... Uh, the future where answers about these perplexing uh, questions uh, very reasonable on your part um, uh, and I think it's very stimulating just to discuss this mm-hmm. uh, what are we talking about here spirituality mystical experiences uh, we're talking about neuro- neurobiology as well and physics we're talking about multidisciplinary uh, approaches to looking at this unique phenomena we call death (laughs) that is so complex and vast in in so many ways and obviously people of different disciplines have different takes on it and the physicians in your your example that you in your question will contend certainly that that consciousness is highly dependent on the brain and once the brain no longer functions yeah that's it the the hard drive crashes and the screen fades to black and there's no more yes yes and no yes and no because if if the person is being kept alive on life support, the only organ that is not functioning that we know of is the brain. So if the rest of the body is still working, if blood is still flowing through the, the, the person's body, and if life after death is only classified after death, this person is still being kept alive for cropping purposes. So my question is, what determines if this person is a, is capable of experiencing a near-death experience, or does this prove in one aspect that near-death experiences and life after death is more myth than fact? Uh there's a lot there in in your questions, uh, oh. and, and it deserves a, a, a complex uh, response. But here again, we don't even have a clear definition of what death is. You're referring to death of the brain. Does that mean then that the person is deemed clinically dead? Medical definition is just that, flat line. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, the brain being kept, excuse me, the body being kept alive, blood circulating, right. Uh, Tissue is not going to degenerate, decay. Uh, and thus, we're talking about two different distinct aspects of life, body life. And it, the question then is, is there a, a spiritual kind mm-hmm. of life that's independent of both the body even though the, and the, the brain? But we, don't, uh, we and, don't know for a fact if the spirituality of life is actually 
in the brain. It could be somewhere else. Could be in the heart. Could be somewhere else. Is that yeah. not right? Yeah, indeed. And people do make uh, contentions yeah. that are, are based on insufficient evidence because we don't have any firm evidence. We're, okay. we're certainly speculating, theorizing, of course, and it's and it's reasonable and to some extent fun to do so for those who are interested in it. And and, and yeah, um, that spiritual aspect of, of human existence is something that, that we can't understand. We don't even have criteria to, to actually describe what it is. Right. But if if the brain flatlines uh, and and an aspect of, of consciousness is independent of the brain, as I mentioned earlier, then there could be a form of life after death. And people believe, however, that the, that body eventually, when it does decay, does give rise to life in the form of nutrients for trees, flowers, grass, etc., food for bugs. And, and right. So in a sense, you could look at reincarnation being like a recycling of, of life in a sense. But... But look, the atoms in our body, the subatomic particles, they don't, they rearrange, they, they decay in mm -hmm. some way, but they don't dissip dissipate completely. Right. They still do exist. There are quantum physicists that will contend that consciousness may, may actually reside within the subatomic particles of the body. After the entire universe, the physical universe is composed of these subatomic particles. And Einstein developed his unified field theory based in large part, on the nature of these particles, and which gave rise to his unified field theory, which incorporated unique, complex mathematical formulas to describe, better understand, the new two nuclear forces, gravitational energy and electromagnetism. He may have, however, as some people contend, left out another force, that being an aspect of consciousness. Some subtle energy that may generally may may gen be generated by brain cells. In fact, we do see yet some evidence for this now. We're just scratching the surface, however, in this arena to better understand whether or not a type of energy yet to be detected. And we're looking into the way into the future here, but it's, it's okay to do so. But that aspect of energy yet to be discovered, possibly, may very well may very well be the energy that gives some evidence, if not complete evidence, to the fact that an uh, aspect of consciousness, I, self, this soulful self, mm -hmm. persists in another realm. How long, in your opinion, sir, as a scientist, would you say that it takes before the subatomic particles of the human body that are in, within a person's body who has died are eventually released back into the ether. Well, I, I don't have a, a firm uh, temporal uh, answer okay. along those lines, but uh, you, you, I, I, I could only guess, and I, I don't have a, a direct, uh, clear okay. answer. It, I was asking that question because I would I was trying to establish, well, if it takes so long for a person's uh, subatomic particles to enter back into the ether after death, is there a correlation between the sighting of spiritual apparitions of that person or the fact that it takes so long there have been, uh, there have been spiritual apparitions before that time that uh, is this caused by the consciousness or is this caused by the person who is seeing the apparitions desire or is it part of their grieving process? Uh, you asked for very complex questions, uh, and and that's and that's fine. Uh, it's it's we, let's let's put it this way: okay. there's no studies that look at that oh. the the incidence of apparitions of the individual who's just died. In reverse, however, after death communication, deathbed visions mm -hmm. um, are are what has been looked at in in. Uh, in terms of individuals who are going through the dying process, have been have been in studies shown to report. Uh, and you know where I'm going here. You're communicating with deceased relatives, uh -huh. religious figures, seeing angels with different sure. things. Hospice workers in studies and critically care critical care physicians have contended in vast majority of cases they say it's it's unusual for these individuals to not 
report that they are experiencing deceased relatives. Uh, they even see people who they didn't know deceased uh, as this, uh, that so-called apparition that you're referring to, which may or may not be evidence of life after death. I'm not sure exactly what that is. But nevertheless, when people are conversing, communicating telepathically with these, as they report, as they report, with these beings, sometimes they didn't know that person again had died, but then they later find out that, that the individual did die. Uh, so this, these kinds of experiences uh, get one's attention. So if it's a very common outcome, uh, maybe again, mm -hmm. it could be brain-based. It, it's not going to prove anything conclusive. Uh, but what is particularly interesting is individuals who do have an NDE, at, which incorporates the out-of-body experience, certainly, uh, have veridical perceptions. It's rare in occurrence, but in other words, what that implies is that the individual who leaves their body experiences something remote from the body, beyond their, their sensory systems. And when they, so to speak, are resuscitated or in, in, Retrieve back into the body. Dr. Davis, the please stand by, sir. We... Dr. Davis, please stand by. We've got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exonation. Dr. Robert Davis is our guest. He's the author of Should, uh, 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 Life After Death, an analysis of the evidence. And uh, we'll be back on the other side of this break after the news. Don't go away. Our broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com.
ExoNation, uh, Dr. Robert Davis is our guest this hour. We're talking to Dr. Davis about his new book entitled, all right, do you have your pencils and paper ready? That's it. Life After Death, an analysis of the evidence. His website is www.theufophenomenon.com. Doctor, in, in your opinion, what role, if any, does consciousness play as part of the paranormal and extra, extraordinary experiences? Well, you can make that uh, uh, relationship. Uh, and we have to look at many, many types of experiments that, that look at the paranormal, or in other words, events, experiences that simply cannot be explained by current mm-hmm. scientific principles. Uh, like extrasensory perception or ESP, uh, clairvoyance, precognition, uh, like uh, stories of reincarnation, mediumship, uh, recalling accurate information beyond the body's sensory capabilities. And we see evidence in the form of collective consciousness, um, whereby when the consciousness of millions of people worldwide are focused on a single event, Experiments have shown that random event generators or, ge- or computers stationed worldwide, over a hundred of them, which produce bits of information in the form of zeros and ones, and thus over time they should generate 50% zeros and ones, they become extraordinarily uh, non-random. Um, and the point is, what is happening here is that it happened on 9-11, it happened when President Obama was elected. It happened during the tsunami incident in Southeast Asia. And when, the, again, the collective attention of millions of individuals, possibly a focused consciousness, as you alluded to, uh, is being brought to a single point in time on the same thing, can alter physical systems. We see this on, on in an individual level, not only a worldwide type of effect, as we mm-hmm. just described, we see this in experiments of the EEG, EKG, uh, where one individual can influence the physiological activity in another. We see evidence, in other words, of, of ESP. I, there's one thing I could say with certainty. I can't say if there's life after death mm-hmm. with certainty, but ESP is real. I'm, I'm more than convinced of that based oh, so on am I. the experimentation that has demonstrated yeah. this time and time again. Um, and that alone indicates that a person's ability, and it's rare in occurrence, but but it can be trained effectively from early on in life, at least we're starting to look at that. Uh, and some people are manifesting that ability on the proper conditions. Now, if that, if that uh, is accepted by the scientific community, and not every, everybody is on board with that concept of ESP being valid, then we're looking at what? Is that an aspect of consciousness? Is that an evidence of a soul? If we don't need our physical systems to perceive accurate information beyond the body or read somebody else's mind or affect physical systems like random event generators and make them non-random, among other physiologic alterations and other beings, then we're talking about something quite unique. Are are Uh, we, though, is is it really that unique? When we take a look at the brain and we know that the brain you know, e- emits electrical charges. We know that um, there's an electromagnetic field around the body and it's caused by the uh, the electric, you know, within. Is it is it that impossible to to really look at things and say, okay, fine, you know, if the, the, the brain has the capability of acting just like a radio transmission reception, that anything that emits electricity can be a carrier. So is it possible the electricity that we are emanating from our body is actually transmitting radio signals or telepathic signals that is tied in with ESP? Well, that may very well be the case. And and alluding to uh, our early discussion, this this possible energy or torsion energy, Mm -hmm. subtle, weak um, emission from the body may in fact uh, be the basis for interacting with the environment and other people, facilitating, in other words, yes, indeed, ESP, or affecting physical systems in that manner. Yeah. That force, yes, that force, which is not yet firmly detected or nor accepted by the scientific community, certainly right. as fact, 
again, might be that missing link in Einstein's unified field theory, possibly, and I'm not saying irrefutably, but there are indications that that might be the case looking ahead, 100, 200 years, if we could turn our futuristic uh, uh, cognitive abilities. Mm. And, 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 but going back to your comment, the analogy can be made, yes, the brain does obviously generate neuroelectric activity mm -hmm. of varying frequency in the very low frequencies, comparable to the frequency of the Earth, believe it or not, and that is probably not a, a coincidence, uh, but we are part of the universe in a sense. We see this alignment, interrelationship between frequencies in the brain, the frequency of the Earth itself at 7 hertz. That is that aside, that aside however, rate, look, radio frequencies, you, I don't have to explain to you, you're, you're broadcasting on a, on a specific frequency. These frequencies exist in, in our immediate environment. Mm -hmm. It's not visible, obviously, but there is energy here, of course. Uh, in other words, can there also be other frequencies or energies that are obviously not detectable by our sensory systems, but nevertheless, do still exist? And that, that is the issue at hand here. Two, uh, it's just that our brain is it focuses and interprets on specific frequencies, like like light emissions from the Big Bang, right. photons of energy are bouncing off matter now, entering our visual system, of course, and converting that energy into neuroelectric energy, a type of energy certainly the brain can only understand, and that is not not a simple process by any means. Um, but is that reality? Then that's the question. Is that reality? My interpretation of a light the subatomic particle uh, generated 13.8 billion years ago from the Big Bang. Is this reality? Well, we know energy, of course, exists beyond our sensory capability. The uh, question, of course, is whether or not once the limitation of the body is gone, when, in other words, it, 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 the screen drive crashes and the, and the and a hard drive crashes and the screen turns to black, when that decomposition occurs, yeah, maybe, maybe that type of energy still, still indeed persists. And, and that, is, that is a speculation, but we're starting to see some uh, interesting results uh, from unique experiments along the lines of proving other dimensions. Uh, and, and there are, again, uh, interesting results that are suggesting that, indeed, we may have this occurring. Why is it so important that we, in my opinion, want to play God and surpass the... and, and, and want to know about life after death? I... I, I I'm, I have a hard time grasping the the rationale behind life after death research. Uh, because uh, because people are experiencing an aspect of death and living longer now uh, from advanced resuscitation techniques that allow to bring them back despite them flatlining for a relatively much longer time mm -hmm. than, than before we had such advanced techniques. And the incidence is so high now that people that NDE is firmly acknowledged within the medical community. So it's not a matter of uh, playing God in a sense, uh, but more of a matter of that trying to make sense out of what people are experiencing, which could certainly be a, a brain-based event. Right. Or they are indeed truly believe, truly interacting, that is, with deceased relatives as they report during their NDE. Now, uh, similar to why uh, someone who believes in, in Jesus sees the religious figure of Jesus on, uh, on occasion, where, as we all know, uh, those that observe other faiths see the, the religious figure of, of that faith. So as there is a psychocultural composition here that, that their preconceived beliefs do enter into the equation somewhat. So, uh, the, the, you know, the picture gets more complex as you, as you look at the results from studies, but the fact that people say, hey, I experienced death and I experienced another reality like neuroscientist Eben Alexander and thousands and thousands and millions that, that is uh, individual cases like this. So it, it bears raising the question it's in simply because people are contending that they no longer fear death. They're more compassionate, more, more ecologically sensitive about the, 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 the status of our planet. They're more humane in so many different ways. They're less materialistic. They become less interested in organized religion 
but become more spiritual, more interested about matters that involve spirituality, consciousness. Um, they, be, they become students of the psychic and, and, and paranormal. They're turned on by that. Uh, the, quest, the point is they, they, we see this evidence whereby individuals who knock on that door and maybe even step foot inside that mm-hmm. door on the other side, whatever that might be, uh, are changed in dramatic, significant, profound ways from that experience forward. All right, uh, Dr. Davis, please stand by. We've got to take our final break. Exxon Nation, Dr. Robert Davis is our special guest. Uh, He's the author of a new book that's called Life After Death, an analysis of the evidence. His website is www.theufophenomenon.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Don't forget, you can find out all about the programming we have available for you, 724-365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, simply by going to www.xzbn.net. Don't forget, you can always send me an email. Tell me if you're a skeptic or a believer. Do you believe in life after death? That's the question for this hour. Do you believe in life after death? Send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. Dr. Robert Davis and I return as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone on the other side of this break. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades, there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings, slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From Out of the Woodwork will take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.realness.com. The question we're asking this hour, Exonation, is there a life after death? Well, my guest this hour, Dr. Robert Davis, has written a book entitled Life After Death, an analysis of the evidence. Um, is it, you know, you, I was listening to you talk about the people who had the near-death experiences and how it changed their lives. 
uh, spiritually. They looked at the ecology differently. They, 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 they made a total change in their life. And, and I'm just wondering if another, another expression for life after death or near-death experience would be rude awakening to the real world. <laughs> uh, well, well said. Um, it, it's like again, uh, do people see a world differently, or are they seeing a different world? Um, <laughs> rephrase that for me. I, I appreciated that question, but rephrase it for me if you don't mind. All right. Is it possible that it, a near-death experience is actually a kick in the in the butt <laughs> to the person? Yeah, yeah. That's what I would. <laughs> I'll tell you, the uh, near-death experience is profoundly life-transforming, mm-hmm. but not only near-death experiences. This is what is especially interesting. There are numerous experiences that fall under the heading of spiritual, mystical, and extraordinary experiences, from, from returning back from the moon and yeah. observing the Earth. People, astronauts, we have transcendent, awe-inspiring, uh, uh, life-changing events that they integrate right. and it's manifested uh, in varying ways, generally for the positive. People that even take DMT, dimethyltryptamine, and ayahuasca, some of them report the same thing. It varies, obviously, on the person, etc. But uh, people who actually have encounters with UFOs and, in- and claim to interact with non-human intelligences also report the same kinds of psycho-spiritual changes, generally for the positive. Uh, and that's what the Dr. Edgar Mitchell's Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Experiences has found in, in, in a study in mm-hmm. 3,256 individuals. And this uh, article submitted to the Journal of Scientific Exploration, uh, which should be published sometime this year, it, it in a sense is saying that this is just another type of experience for some reason, similar to the NDE, OBE, etc., as I mentioned, that gives rise to similar types of outcomes, especially psycho-spiritual. Call that consciousness, if you will, soul, spirit, whatever it is. Point is, generally for the positive, 70% claim it is for the positive in the varying ways and attributes that we, we address. Question, obviously, is why? Mm. Is, is it, uh, again, brain-based? Or are they indeed, is there an aspect of consciousness facilitated by that unique type of encounter with an aerial phenomenon of, of whatever it might be? And you can't dismiss this. We just had recent events in the news, uh, as we all are aware, from the New York Times that, that discloses $22 million budget project that, that sponsored research into UFOs which is probably still ongoing and probably always has in varying ways. But the, the, the point is, uh, this is not a, a uh, <clears throat> this is a phenomenon that we simply requires, along with all the other phenomena we're, we're addressing t- today, associated with life after death. But this is, this is part of it too, because people who have these UFO-like encounters actually contend that they feel their consciousness being expanded. They feel at one with the universe. They feel uh, interconnected. Again, many of the manifestations, the absence of space and time, a dimensionless environment that, I hear, yeah, right, OB, people who have OBEs contend. And you know what is uniquely interesting here? Theories in quantum physics, and again, theories in quantum physics, not absolute proof. We're talking about probabilities here. But they, many of these principles align with the subjective experience. And this is an important point. If we can somehow bridge this scientific, spiritual, anecdotal, extraordinary experience gap, which is huge, if, if it can be done, and it probably can be to some extent, but it is dependent upon discovering new scientific principles, which, which obviously will happen. We don't know in what way, when. Uh, what revelation it will provide for society, for the individual, of course, uh, and and the uh, quality of life. Uh, but we 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 know that. Look, it took us six or six years from the first time we flew at Kitty Hawk mm-hmm. to when we first stepped foot on the moon. Um, everybody understands its geometric increase in technological advances, medical advances, etc. It's been a leapfrog, and and create astonishing new uh, <laughs> things to play with. 
and hopefully we get a better understanding of consciousness, an aspect of reality, why we why we evolved from that primordial soup, if you believe in, in Darwinism. Why did we evolve into these this is complex intellectual, creative, uh, pseudo balanced uh, bipedal uh, primate? Uh, why did we do that? Well, uh, is, or it just is. Maybe there is no answer. It, uh, it, you know, if there is no answer, you know, wouldn't it be more beneficial for science to spend time, energy, on money on more realistic problems? For example, the the condition of our planet the homeless, the hungry, uh, climate control, instead of wasting valuable time on money on something that might not even exist? Yeah, and and, and you can make a case for that. And I don't don't dispel that at all. Of course. At, at 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 the end of the day, doctor, at the end of the day, what will proving life after death do to, for society, what what will it give back, if anything? It's a profound question, uh, and the the answers can be written in, in thousands of books, um, uh, interpreted differently by each different personality living on the planet. Uh, look, uh, the, the granting agencies do not give a lot of money to researchers to do this kind of research. However, however, there are disciplines that are uniquely interested, neuroscientists, quantum physicists, biologists, they explore for consciousness, they explore for an aspect of energy that might, might persist. And yes, if it was on CNN breaking news, that, hey, guess what, there is life after death, can you imagine? Uh, First first of all, I give CNN no credibility whatsoever. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's not a news service. It's a political talk show. And uh, not, I know, wouldn't BBC, even go that far. Yeah. Uh, I used to listen to, uh, you know, watch uh, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. That's wow. news when well, I lived up uh, up at, uh, in Plattsburgh, in New York. Yeah. That is what news should be. Uh, so we don't have news here in America uh, I, in, in, in the way it should be. You know, uh, if, the, if the major news story uh, outlets would say, Scientists discover cure for common cold. I would be thrilled. I would be ecstatic. But to hear them say there's life after death, I'd go, eh, so? <laughs> well, the obvious question is, well, what does that mean, of course? What, what form of life after death? Right. Uh, an, an insect, tree, uh, advanced uh, being? Uh, that, now, there's uh, a that question. knows everything about the world and universe? Now, there's a question, Doctor. Do animals and other life forms... Do they have uh, near-death experience and out-of-body experiences and life-after-death experiences? Oh, there's, there's no way to know. There's, there's, no, there's no way to know. <laughs> People contend that, that animals reincarnate. That's a whole other arena yeah. uh, that lack, obviously, evidence to, to, you know, to argue about. Right. So uh, we, we, we have no idea. The question no, I, is, uh, some animals, some species are mm-hmm. aware of themselves when they're looking in the mirror yep. uh, and are probably more intelligent than we think, like dolphins. Uh, the, the new information on, on their intelligence capabilities are astonishing. Uh, so, uh, again, we're curious, and, and research in this area, I think, uh, tries to solve an inherent innate curiosity. And and it's like landing on the moon. You know, why did we go there? Well, it's not so much go, you know, landing and walking on the moon that was a, a, a cool thing, although it was a, a, a race against uh, Russia. So you know, that it had that aspect of, of competition and supremacy on, on our yeah. pale blue dot in, the, in space. But it was more of the technological advancements, insights that we gained in the process of developing this little uh, metal sphere, so to speak, that, mm-hmm. that we sent off uh, there. So, uh, and we derive great benefit from that. Maybe in, in, in doing research, and I do believe we do need to devote more time and attention to, to this subjective experience, which is real in their minds, at the very least. So psychologists in particular need to become more aware that people do have these experiences and are, are trans, not only transformed positively, but initially, they traumatized. What just happened to me? They yeah. think they left their body. They think they saw the other side. They think they, that they're the only ones and that they have a psychological problem. And for fear of ridicule, they're not going to go to their psychologist or admit it to family members. Certainly some do, of course, but they're hesitant. 
and people stay in the closet with it and suffer, truly do. Uh, this is not, not uh, unknown. Uh, people have uh, attend support groups, people, psychologists do provide support to these kinds of experiences right. who yearn for answers. Uh, and it is unfortunate because that, that's where research, more than anything, uh, getting back to your earlier question, which is very insightful, should go more towards how the psychological yeah. support. Um, I, I, I get it. I get where you're coming from. And Doctor, uh, I provide I, them assistance. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us tonight on the show, sir. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, continued success. And I look forward to the next time we have the opportunity of having you back on the show to talk about your UFO book. Well, I'd uh, like that very much. Uh, and uh, if I may say, you do an exceptional job uh, as an interviewer. And, and thank you for your contributions. Uh, oh. with, uh, interviewing so many guests and informing the public of so many important things. Thank, thank you. you very much. No, sir, it's I who thank you, and uh, to you and yours, the very best of the new year. Thank you. You too. Exo Nation, Dr. Robert Davis has been my guest this hour. He is an internationally recognized scientist. He's written um, two books, but the book we were featuring tonight on the show is Life After Death, an Analysis of the Evidence, www the UFO phenomenon.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464. 